Welcome to Equipment for Living. Welcome to Equipment for Living. Welcome to Equipment for Living, where we're sitting down with artists to talk about how they keep their hearts alive in a world that doesn't always make that easy for art. I'm your host, Daniel Bullen. I'm sitting down today with Chris Gonzalez, who's an upcoming uh, poet, playwright, performance artist. I'm sitting down today with Barry Mosier, who um, doesn't really claim the title of artist. He prefers to go by Booksmith. I'm sitting down today with my friend Jessica Poser, whose art uh, kind of defies categorization. Thank you so much for sitting down with us today. My pleasure. Great. When I'm not working, I am generally working. Yeah, uh, sure. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, when yeah, that, I, I think leave that's the and go have religion. lunch, I'm, talk, I'm still thinking about sure. what I'm doing. Um, when I wake up in the morning, generally speaking, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is what I'm working on. It's, I think it's an emotional landscape. You just try not to leave any more yeah. than you have to, to get distracted by other pe other concerns out there. I just don't think about it that much. Yeah, um, about the other concerns. For me, it's a matter of just getting my ass out of bed in the morning and going to work. Yeah, yeah. The well, same I, as if I had a job in, a, in an auto repair shop. Sure. You know, I just get up and go to work. Sure. And it, that's one of the things that people on the other side of the this thing that we're talking about don't understand is how bloody difficult it is sure. to work alone and mm. to work in your own house. Sure. That's another thing that the public uh, doesn't understand. They have no concept mm. whatsoever of what an artist's work mm. is like. Um, it's because we've, given, we've been given these, these false images, you know, the Van Gogh. Mm. Hmm. who, uh, you know, is, is the, the, the stricken, driven artist, you know, who's slightly mad hmm. and, um, you know, never sold a painting in his life, hmm. and he only sold one and, you know, going it's, on. It's the caricature everybody loves. Exactly. Yeah. But it's not true. Sure. I mean, by and large, it is simply not true. Artists don't starve. Hmm. Uh, most of some, like Raphael, the, the sucker lived in a palace. Most artists, I, I think I'm safe in saying, have been responsible people mm. who, like me, yeah. get up in the morning sure. and go to work. In that moment when you're with the art, in the, you're the, the moment when you're present in the art, in the process of making it, um, or who's in that moment with you? Because I have a feeling that you're alone there, but the you that's alone isn't just you. Mm -hmm which is a sentence that doesn't make sense, right? But I think it might. Makes a lot of sense to me. And it makes me think of um, Philip Guston, hmm. the painter, and he talked about how as soon as he gets into his studio, it's just full of people. Hmm. There's his mother and his ex-wife and his kids and the, the woman who yelled at him on the bus that's, that morning and everyone's in there. Hmm. And then he just starts to paint. And one by one, everyone leaves the studio until finally he's alone. Hmm. So I think that it's um, different people are haunting me at different times. I'll let the metronome of crackling flame forge me a map, and I'll let it lead me where meek peace bringers rap. Yes, I will sacrifice my fear. I will practice every year, and I will see my own foolishness through from shade to shape. Thank you. Um, you know, one of the things James Baldwin, James Baldwin says is that there are reports that only poets can make. And mm -hmm. I think that us yep, being yep, enough yep, 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 yep. kind of depends on you being the representative person, you know, Emerson's yes. representative man, the poet whose wealth is the commonwealth, yep, yep, on yep. the stage, using your time on the stage to articulate the enoughness of us. Right. Right. And that's a radical stance to take mm -hmm. because it's, there was a nakedness to it. Like, mm -hmm. it was very clear when you took the mic that... It was just you. Like there was no 
I mean, and I'm not saying you were naked on stage, but there was no trappings, there was no costume. It was just it was which a, is new to me. For sure, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I don't want to give the impression that sure. that is like how I've always been. Right. I'm actually stepping into this newly, being like, what does it actually mean to? Uh, dive deep within myself. I, this whole time, have just been talking about my own wealth. Mm. I, I can memorize things really easily. Mm. I can write really long things. Yeah. I can project it in a really way so everyone can hear it in the yeah. back. But that is different from yeah. real, and that, those, those things are impressive, which is sort of a superficial thing. Sure. You know, and when I would get off stage, people would be like, oh, like, how did you memorize all the, yeah. and if you're getting that kind right. of feedback, you know you're not like digging deep sure. under, right. and so, when you start to talk about the Commonwealth, it's like, okay, what's beneath right. the impressive right. thing? Thank you. We're really malnourished as a, as a culture. Mm. And um, I, I don't know, I just, I guess I remain somewhat hopeful. Mm. So what is it that gives you hope looking at the world that we're looking at from today? I guess, you know, conversations like this hmm. Thank and, you. Um, and hopefully, you know, that people spend uh, more time listening and looking. Hmm. I think it's in your work. I don't think you can encounter your work without stopping and listening. Thank you. Great. I think that's a great place to stop. Thanks so much for joining us. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time.